Hey guys, Neil again, and we'll be looking at Tyler Eifert, the Notre Dame tight end, and I feel a dirty column tight end, but uh, that's what they say he is. Um, as we're kind of hit the sea, we'll see him, just how well he blocks, and uh, his whole nine yards, which aren't terrific. Um, just some of the stuff, he ran 4.68 at the Combine, 6.6, 251, uh, ran a good 20-yard shuttle, 4.32 seconds, so, a very athletic guy, 22 reps on bench, shows some strength at the tight end position. Um, so, really what I'm going to be paying attention to more than anything here is his receiving, because I think that's what he's going to be doing in the NFL. Uh, what we get out of him blocking, I think, is a positive. <coughs> so. Not sure Junior's done to his biggest scene. The Eifer at the bottom of the screen was a crisp, clean out route. Uh, stuff like that that makes him want to the NFL. And then it's blocking like that that makes you wonder, is he truly a tight end? He doesn't give you a whole lot at the bottom of the screen here, I guess I'll use my mouse, and he give, he can, the one thing he can do is he can stalk block, he can get in front of a corner, he can get in front of a safety, he can stalk block, so, again, you see a strong stalk, stalk block by him, uh, I see him in motion, he likes going to this H-back position, and, you know, he, he just doesn't give you a whole lot of the line of scrimmage blocking wise. He's trying to seal here, and he can't get a seal. Uh, fortunately, Ryan Beck's able to just get to the outside. So, you know, that's a good, nice, good stalk block from on the outside down here. So, when it comes to blocking, you, you want him up on a linebacker. And, well, there you go. Before we get into that, this is what he can do. Um, he finds areas in zones. He can win versus man. He beat D. Milner twice versus man in the national championship game. Uh, he clearly is a very talented receiver. There's a good a good downfield block for him versus another size player, which he should be able to do. And there's the big negative. And that's the big negative in this game for him is this block right here for me. And I want my tight end to be able to give me something. And he lunges. And lunging is the last thing you want from offensive line and tight end. And he lunges again there. But fortunately, when well, he gets smacked down, but fortunately the Golston or Golston's run the other way. Um, <clears throat> so you're not going to see too much out of him when it comes to blocking. There he was downfield. You see a height of Angie. He has 6'6". Quite a large guy. And give you something in the jump ball area. Just can't seal block and a reach block there at all. You know, all I have to do is cut that player off and just can't get it done. I mean, again, it's out of bounds, but it's a terrific catch. That's what scouts like to see. It's what I like to see. Hey, he went out for a ball. The high, got at the highest point. Comes down out of bounds, but shows me something that you can do. Back in that wing position. You don't see him line at a tight end too much. He might not like being down in three point stance. I don't know. As I say that, he goes into one and he actually gets the cutoff block there. And it actually looks pretty decent. Back in the wing. He's a chip. Run out. Against a corner. Again, he seems to show more confidence in himself. When he's in the corner, at the corner, maybe, well, lunging. And this 44 for Stanford, it kind of beats him up a little bit. Stalk blocking again, does a decent job. So, you know, <laughs> you see what he's giving you. There's nothing, and there's the big play of this game, on the positive end. So he's all negative, and here's the positive. He has a knack for getting the ball at the highest point. That is a skill that sometimes can't be coached. And you know what? If you're a 
quarterback. That's the type of guy you want to have on your team to throw to. Uh, it adds a lot to the offense. Now, if you're on a team looking to draft him, hey, I got to work on his blocking. Mercedes Lewis came to the NFL, was kind of like in this mold, much better pass catcher and blocker. Turned out to be a terrific blocker in the NFL. Jeremy Shockey in his early days, much better catcher than blocker, became an adequate blocker. So you can be taught these skills. And the NFL, he's going to have to do it. Uh, even in these new three-slot, two-slot spread stuff, I think you are going to have to line up a tight end and you are going to have to chip block because Dackle's going to need help against some of these edge rushers. And that's all you have to ask for him. It's just a chip block. So, <clears throat> that wasn't pass interference. I've watched this play a few times. I think it's just incidental contact. And it bothers me that they call it this pass interference. I get it. His hands are on him. By the law of the letter, it's pass interference. I get it. But I think Eford's causing just as much contact as <laughs> the defensive back. But that's neither here nor there. Eford at the bottom. He was just running kind of a post route there. Nothing too crazy. But all right. That was how Eford does the entire game versus Stanford. Uh, the, if you need to watch a little bit more, I suggest just early in the national championship game and then the fourth quarter, you see a little bit more of him. Uh, he beats Milner fairly good. Um, I don't think he's the one who's caught for completion, but the fact that he's able to go against one of the top corners and beat him up a little bit is uh, it's a good sign for me. And all right, I guess I just say if you're watching. Enjoy it, subscribe, or uh, follow me on Zone Reads. All these videos will have a small, short write up with them coming up in today or tomorrow. So, uh, alright. Well, next player we're looking at is Jonathan Cooper, the guard from North Carolina.